All right, everybody, uh, welcome to the June 23rd IPFS Implementers Sync. Um, yes, let's uh, let's get started. Uh, Mav, you want to take us away? <laughs> what me first? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go first. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, hi. Um, I think stuff on my mind is um like the IPF IPFS thing and mostly thinking if we could talk about some gateway and browser things. So I think there's the browser spec spec uh, browser GitHub issue that was opened. I'm not a hundred percent sure like what the format is even gonna be, but I don't know. I want to talk about stuff there. <laughs> Cool. That that sounds like fun. I would love to try, chat about that too. So maybe we'll see if we have time at the end, and we'll get to talk about those things. Um, uh, I guess Matt, you also have some questions about the the IPFS thing. So uh, yes, but I think our good friend Brendan left, so those questions may go unheard for a little bit of time. <laughs> I, I can try and answer some of them. Sure. Um, oh, are, are you yeah. are you wanting me to ask those now? Yeah, I guess yeah, actually, you know what? I'll I'll go first and I'll give my pitch for like I want to talk about IPFS implement. I want to talk about IPFS thing things. Uh, and then sure. we'll go from there. So all right. So a few things. I guess go IPFS 0.13.0 is out. It has hole punching. People like hole punching. So a uh, bunch of other things, some gateway improvements we've we talked about before. Um, but that is is out now. Uh, the WebAssembly codec and ADL stuff is further along. So I'm hoping to talk to folks about that. Uh, at the IPFS thing and sort of see what works, what doesn't. Some of the things around like ADL interfaces could be better, I think. Um, there is like a BitTorrent v1 ADL, it's basically like the UnixFS ADL, but you know, those BitTorrent things, files, folders, same, same deal. Um, reframe the implementation, the, the Go implementation uh, now does streaming results properly and we have some spec changes to do things like delegated routing, uh, or sorry, uh, to do things like better caching. Um, there are a few other spec PRs that are up around like adding more methods to the API for things like peer records or putting provider records, if folks are interested. Um, and we should have a delegate up at like routing.delegate.ipfs.io relatively soon. Uh, and I think what'd be cool is you could take that plus a service that supports secure web sockets on the endpoint. And browsers would then be able to do like peer-to-peer -peer downloading from people and have that just sort of work because you're not limited by like any of the TCP nonsense uh, anymore. Uh, and you don't have to rely on, you know, uh, all of the machinery that gets spun up around WebRTC. Um, and I guess the, the active best thing, uh, I'm running. I'm I'm running the track on on data agony and and IPFS, which I guess is just like if you are interested in like whether it's IPLD things or generally like how we how it is that we work with the data. Uh, I want to make a home for us to to talk about those over there. Um, I've got office hours in uh, a couple of hours, so 4:30 Eastern. Uh, if you are coming, uh, you should have an invite to the Discord channel. Where we talk, where we talk about things. If you'd like to come, RSVP so that people can make sure there's space and hotels and stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess I'll let it go, and we can talk more about the the tracks. But basically, I think like the, each each track lead is going to organize things slightly differently for what it is they're trying to do. Um, you know, at least for, for my track, I, I kind of want to reflect some of the wishes that were expressed here last time, which were like leaving lots of space, you know, in the end of like first half of the day, maybe do some info dumps later, later half of the day, leave it more open for people to discuss what they want to discuss so that it's not all like pre-planned and there's a little more room for people to like get into the pieces they didn't realize they wanted to talk about. Um, but I think that's sort of each track leads thing. And if you're like, I want to, the thing I want to talk about isn't here, then you should propose to lead a track, you know, at 
you know, sort of any time in parallel to the in parallel the ones that are there, uh, and 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 get some folks who are interested to come join and talk with you. Um, Lido, you want to go? Um, yep. So, like, the usual PSA is that Go IPFS is now Kubo. Um, it will be Go IPFS for a while, uh, but we will be in the process of renaming uh, Surface Things and making sure we are publishing packages under both names. Um, so we don't break all the package managers, but just in case, uh, if you see Kubo, that's like literally Go IPFS. Um, but the, the, like, I think that the only update I have uh, is that I, I'm still looking for feedback. Uh, I got a bunch of suggestions and uh, people noticed missing things around HTTP gateway specs. Uh, the draft is in IPFS specs repo. Uh, as I said like, last time, it's it docu it's more or less the, uh, documenting uh, what uh, could, like last go IPFS 0.13 uh, does. Um, and that's the base for the future improvements. Uh, so we want to do improvements, but we have to like document the current state. It's not the best. Some things are over-engineered, but at least we know how things look right now. So we can maybe decide a different uh, subsets of gateways that you want to implement. Uh, and speaking about improvements, we renamed RFC process to something that I still don't know how to pronounce, IPIPS. Ip, ips i don't know suggestions welcome uh it looks cool uh, we need to figure out how to pronounce this uh, uh that's the process for uh suggesting um improvements against existing ipfs specifications or for example uh writable gateway that would be ipip uh against the, the, the existing gateway specs um so things like that. Uh, still looking for feedback. I'd like to like merge uh, both gateway specs and the process before July uh, and have some EPIP drafts ready for IPFS thing. I will be writing some myself. I think it will be for the car, the car selectors and Doug, Jason, and Cibor. But there's a li longer list uh, linked uh, in the agenda. Uh, in case folks want to propose something that you like, really, really want to pitch to people during IPFS uh, thing, it would be useful to use this form to kind of like bring more gravitas to your proposal. That way, you already got it going, and maybe you now get some people interested to review and improve your proposal, and you are like 80% there, I think. So I think that's uh, that's the update. Uh, yeah. Cool, Michael. You you shared an image in uh, in the chat, which uh, looks a lot like a mutable thing. You you want to or something? You want to talk about it? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I I got these this morning. Um, we're we're releasing like an IPNS product uh, called W three Name, and so we've had a designer working on the website, and I was like, oh, I don't. Think that we've had cool graphics about IPNS before. I should share these with the, the implementers call. So I had them take a screenshot and, and put it in here. But yeah, it's uh we have some nice graphics now about how IPNS record updates happen. <laughs> for for uh for posterity, I'll, I'll share my screen for a second. Uh, that's that's the that's the image. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Um. Anything else you wanted to, to chat about or listen in? Hold on. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Hold on. Ah, oh, jeez, stupid thing. Here we go. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, IPFS thing. Uh, I think I'm running the track for IPFS's infrastructure. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I think we'll definitely be doing like short five minute talks and then a wide open day of unconference sort of discussions and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that was really all that I had to say. Well, uh, I, Russell's here. I, I, he's got some, he's got some fun announcements, so I'll, I'll let him do that. 
Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I'll be giving a little bit of info on this during the one minute that I have during all hands. But uh, uh, basically, there's um, Dan, uh, not Daniel Lawrence in uh, his I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he um, is basically getting estuary up to fully compliant. He already got them essentially eight out of for the pinning services compliance. Sorry. So pinning services compliance uh, tool was was launched uh, last week um, and it's public. I've been still working on it. There's been a few issues open and different things, fixing various things. I fixed the delete all pins so it won't delete any um, pins that people had in their account prior to running the compliance checker. Originally, you know, it was, I... I was just using it as, you know, hey, people are going to use their test accounts to test against it, but you never know. So made that safe thanks to a bug report from somebody um, from working on the IPFS cluster, I think they were. But anyway, Lawrence, uh, he was doing Launchpad and he started updating Estuary to be fully compliant. He opened a PR to the pinning service compliance. There was some chat in there, Adine. So um, there's some really interesting learnings for there. And I think we have some more enhancements we need to make as far as like the hash functions to use and things like that. But, but yeah, so estuary, he said, I think they're releasing to production at the end of this week. So if, if they release that and everything goes through fine, they will be the first service that is 100% compliant to the spec with you know, all the checks that we have implemented so far. And I think there's, there's a lot we haven't checked. Like it's not, you know, 100% coverage, but it's, you know, for the base APIs and functionality that people use steadily, it's, you know, it's a good 70, 60%. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I guess I'll also call out the, uh, Daniel Norman also built a tool for his, his launch pad thing called uh, Auspinner, which basically it's just a CLI tool where you just take your data right now, a car file, and you just ship it to a pinning service um, over BitSwap basically. And so you just do the pin on their BitSwap service and the data, shut it down. Um, and so that's sort of like a generic pin your thing. So the car file has to have a complete graph then, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the idea right. is like whatever you're starting with. And so you can take this mm -hmm. thing and you can make it like for mm -hmm. Unix FS, I would, I would hope you would use something like a file store. So you don't like try and carify it. You just use the file mm -hmm. store and you just sort of use the raw blocks as the raw files as they exist on disk. And then you add in any Unix FS overlay blobs and then you mm -hmm. shift the data and then you, you kill it or be able to do like a DAG store start, sort of thing where if you have your data striped across multiple car files, you can like load all of them in, all of their indices mm -hmm. and do your thing. Um, but the idea is basically like you, you have some data, you shouldn't, and you want to send it to a pinning service. It didn't seem to be any tools out there that did this that weren't like run the go IPFS daemon and leave it up until it's done. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it seems like you might want to run such a thing in like a CI environment where you're like, I made my asset, let me ship it to pinning service and then end my thing without any fancy stuff. Um, yeah, that mm -hmm. use case alone, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. And there's some things that we, we picked up too. So like the stuff around like dot storage, not having the delegates yet. It's, it's actually work aroundable because we have both delegates and origins, uh, but the you know you have to you sort of pass in options to the tool because setting up like port mapping or doing uh or setting up like the relay v2 and finding someone to do the hole punching for you uh or help you orchestrate the hole punching takes more resources or time that you might not just want to do like maybe you're running this thing in yeah. ci because you want it to just be done quickly mm -hmm. and waiting mm -hmm. for something else isn't something you want to do you'd rather just error um, yeah, I think like, like the thing that I keep like coming back to with the pinning API is that 
it just requires a whole graph and where we're seeing a lot of like new use cases and especially where we want to go it's all partials it's all like diffs and and random selections of blocks and car files um and so we're just looking at ways to you know piece together some of these other things that you don't necessarily have when you're working with that kind of data um so like something that, that would probably work here and we we have a different use case for this we're like we're we have a, a new kind of tiny block service and we'd like to store car CIDs and then just map them into the block store. But there isn't an existing data structure that you could write that would just allow you to reconstitute a car file, right? Like that's just not really well defined. Like car V2, like the V2 index is almost there, but not quite, like it's missing a bunch of bits. So, but if we had like just a block format effectively that told you all of the information that you would need to do to reconstitute a car file to match a hash from the set of blocks, right? So it had the car v2 index and the header and all the CID prefixes and their offsets. You could basically reconstitute any car file. And then if that's its own block format, then a pinning service or any API could just take that block in a post message and then over bit swap, get all the blocks, right? Um, and then you would actually have that partial. So you, you would have a way to re-describe and move around like whatever partiality ends up in any car file. Yeah, I think there's understanding. So like the, the two mm -hmm. the two big areas that I've heard people try and push on here for like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to pin a whole graph. I want to pin like <laughs> part of Wikipedia. I want to pin like the Wikipedia root mm -hmm. and then like the path down to the file that I want. And then I want the whole file or the whole directory. I don't want all of Wikipedia. I don't want just the directory. Mm -hmm. I want like the Wikipedia root down to and then the directory. Um, mm -hmm. And the two ways I've seen people try and push this are, uh, you know, use use some subgraph descriptor like a selector, uh, or just treat everything as raw blocks and then create an overlay graph on top and <laughs> stop caring. Those are the two yeah. mechanisms I've seen. Uh, there may so, be other ones, but like we can I, there's I think probably room like... to explore there. So the way that that use case is framed though, it, it, it assumes that what we're working against is like some dagified version of data that's already, that already exists that we're querying into. And th th there's like a couple problems with that example. One is that like, it's not a native use case in which we're actually thinking about like the rights to a structure over time, which is like the majority of native use cases, right? Um, and, and the other problem is that like, if you don't create the data structure with some kind of selector mechanism or something that has a selector mechanism built in, you can never create very good selectors for the data. Like when it's file trees, yes, because like that's a data structure that we've defined and we can kind of do that over. But for all the other data structures that we look at, it's like the partiality is really random, right? Like, like look at any blockchain and take an update of the chain, right? Like how do you describe with a selector the blocks that just got changed? You fucking can't, like you just can't. The only thing that you can do is like run the code to produce it and then take that selection. But once you have the selection, you have the blocks in a particular car file, you should just be able to identify that and move that diff around, right? Like, and that partiality is usually like useful, not just in updating the structure, but it usually contains whole sections of the thing that got updated. So it's just like a useful sort of construction to keep around. Um, and like for the use cases that we look at where you're writing data over time, it is just always the case that like you, you, you never have one of these selectors or some kind of like identified partiality. It's literally just like, I have a bag of blocks that are the new data, like go and store this please. <laughs> that, that's always the operation, right? Isn't, but isn't that the same as the like, cause you're saying like a block format, like a block format could just be, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. have dag C bar blocks yeah. that point at all. Of, I just have like a, an eight, whatever, an eighth <laughs> of all the things or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think that like, so car files are, are like kind of beautiful and that they don't do a ton of things. Like <laughs> a lot of people's problems with car files tend to be like, I thought that this root meant something and it turns out to mean nothing. Uh, and that, <laughs> that, that is definitely true. Um, but like the nice thing about car files is that like, it's just a bag of blocks and a header that doesn't show up in any of those blocks that you can basically use to sort of tool in whatever protocols that you want. <laughs> Um, and so like, I feel like car files are just going to continue to get used for all of these use cases that we kind of can't think about. And what we should really do is take the partiality that ends up in a car file and maintain it, right? Like it's, it's usually useful. It often even has like good ordering in it, 
product um, that you want to use. So if you're doing like optimistic prefetches and bit swap, like if you take the car file ordering, that's usually the right ordering for the next set of blocks that somebody will want. Um, so like, how do we just sort of like take those car files and then describe what's in them really well such that we can move them around other protocols. And we're, we're already using car CIDs for like a ton of stuff. And that's useful if you literally have the whole car file that matches the hash. But if you have a block store and you want to reconstitute a car file, like you don't have enough with just that. So we need like something else in there. All right, Mo, you got your hand up. Yeah, just talking about like linking to data in general from the mm -hmm. PLD space, like we have mm -hmm. the new patches spec, which could be useful for um, like describing changes to a large data set in like a fairly compact way. So like one thing I can imagine being useful is like, I want to pat pass a patch set around or like I produce a patch set as part of an operation. And then since that patch set is deterministic, you can kind of like pass it to something that has an existing set of data and end up with the same CID as you did on another machine. Like another thing relating to linking to stuff, you talked about selectors and graphs. Again, in the IPLD space, um, I've been talking more about IPLD URLs and what we could do with them that could be a useful thing to integrate with pinning services where rather than passing the root CID of an entire tree I want to pin, I could pass a URL which could include ADLs or selectors or wh whatever else to kind of specify just the things you need. Um, it could like URLs could also be useful for a question that I'm seeing a lot of like, how do we deal with IPNS data? I think right now, there's a dev grant in the works for extending the pinning service with um, IPNS support. And it feels like since everything is so CID and block focused, it's kind of hard to represent like, hey, I want just like this chunk of immutable data set to be pinned. Whereas if we had URLs, it'd be a lot more straightforward to say like, hey, I want this resource. Just like some random thoughts to throw out there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we tend to always talk in the same breath about like the tools that we're writing for making the entire kind of authoring experience better. And then also the tools and protocols that we're working on to like just manage what people are doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, and that's the thing with the patch spec, right? Is that it's great when you're using patch um, and like, and, and if you can get inside of the tool chain that's using patch, like you can use it for a bunch of cool stuff. But like, I'm, like I can't, I'm never gonna move like the Solana people to using patch and like thinking in IPLD terms, but then like, I've got to take all that block data out of that chain and put it into the network <laughs> uh, and put it into like other protocols. And so there's so much stuff that we just don't have control over. Like I'm always trying to, um, like j just think in terms of like, how do I take the kind of chaos that's going on and quantify it so that we can just move it around. And most of that we've just done with car files um, and looking at Git for a lot of inspiration there. Cause Git's the same way. Like Git is a really gnarly data structure that doesn't have any kind of like selector or patching syntax around it. Um, and what they do is that they just say like, oh, you, you want to do this operation on your node. Tell me that operation, I'll run it. And then I'll put all that data into a pack file and to do the pack file. <laughs> Um, and I think with, with Wasm and all of the new advanced ADL stuff going into Wasm, we, we end up getting that basically, right? We're like, now we can just take all those operations and just run them on different nodes and then send you back the, the car or whatever the block set is and how we want to describe the block set, right? Um, I think eventually we actually should move towards describing block sets with the, um, with like the, the comp calculation instead, um, properly padded, right? So like the stuff that, that Peter's been working on um, because then you can actually use that as an inclusion proof, so. Yeah, I think to some extent, what I, what I see come up a few times around, around that kind of thing is like um, other projects that are not IPFS have mm -hmm. all chosen to have like exactly one data format <laughs> and they have in that one data format they have a bunch of predictability that comes with it and this includes like whether it's the filecoin compi or the BitTorrent info hash or mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. the way in which get blocks are described like th there's like exactly mm -hmm. one way to do the thing which gives them like <laughs> some level of optimization of it right and that means that in our case yeah, we need yeah. to either have like a magic number in front that tells you which 
of the which, which <laughs> blessed way to use or we need to build things where you don't and so you see the stress in there between like there's like the the fbl or the unixfs adl which is sort of like mm -hmm. there are many there are many writers so there are many writers mm -hmm. and one reader and then there's mm -hmm. like the BitTorrent version of this which is like there is one writer and one reader and you will do it exactly this way mm -hmm. and you will like obey me right uh, yeah and yeah. they have different sorts of of like characteristics that you might want to explore um, yeah yeah and there's so many crazy hacks that we have to do in here like like one thing that i'm definitely gonna have to, we're gonna have to do is like since you have to create that padding in order to do the comp PE calculation and make it work as an inclusion proof definitely going to write a block format that is only ever zeros so that you can take the cid and not actually go try to fetch it out of the network and just constitute the block because you know that it's just zeros right Russell, you got a, you got a hand. Yeah, so um, I want to understand more about the limitations with um, pinning not supporting partial data. Like if I have a CID um, and I and I if I have a CID, then I have all of the data. Is that is that correct? So if you have the CID, so the, one of the things that tends to happen is that people refer to uh, a CID as sometimes meaning a CID is a hash is like a, a hash of an object and then a thing that tells you how to interpret it. Um, sometimes people refer to the CID as referring to like that block. And sometimes people refer to it as that block and everything underneath the rest of the graph underneath it. <laughs> And so like, it's very important when someone refers to like, I got a CID that you understand which one of those two things they're asking about. Um, and that's kind of where things go. So like the, the way pinning and the pinning API works currently came from the, an, the ancestry of, of Go IPFS, which is like pins are, you pin a CID, which is a full graph, which implies a full graph, but like, Sometimes you don't want that, right? Right, yeah, uh, totally. And so now you have to figure out how to describe that. And so you end up, do you have to do crazy things? Like I have to pin these 10 blocks individual, like even for like the case <laughs> of the Wikipedia thing where like I need the Wikipedia root and a few directories and then the file, right? Do I have to like pin, you know, these 10 blocks individually? And then I put, pin the rest of the graph together? Cause like that seems insane from like a, user right. management perspective yeah so then i have to like well, find one of these other mechanisms for describing yeah. the data mm -hmm. i yeah and there's there's definitely more than a few different variations on this partial data but i think for for the use case of let's say um you know part of wikipedia um if if you gave the pinning provider two pins they could walk the path between them ideally, right? Or do they need a, a, the third sort of container car, this is what everything is, CID to be able to walk that? So they can compute. So the, 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 the pinning API allows for a replace thing, which basically lets you do a delta for like, if what I'm doing is I'm growing a graph, then I can do this. If I'm just like appending, if I have like an append only log, the pinning API will be fine because you'll just keep adding car, you'll just keep adding blocks on and you already have the previous ones. The problem is like, what if the thing that I want to pin is like a subset of some like existing graph? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I want to pin an inclusion proof that like my thing is in this blockchain, right? Yeah, height, like if you take the, if you, you know. yeah, like if you take a hash like in most parts of the Bitcoin data structure, right? And you pinned it, you would end up with like a hundred gigabytes of stuff, right? Because it would basically traverse back through the end of time, <laughs> right? Um, I, I think uh, there's yeah. another limitation that was calling out, which is uh, because codecs are pluggable, right? Mm -hmm. Chances are that service that you're asking to pin may not even be able to swap the graph because they do not know how to traverse it. If it's a private data, some of those links may not be open as well. So that's another case where you may not be able to walk the graph. So something like car is mm -hmm. nice in that regard that it just gives you the blocks and you don't necessarily know what the dog looks like. Um, 
Yeah, no, I, may have been coming back to Adin's original point, which is that like sometimes we we use a CID to mean the date all the graph. We have to not do that ever again. <laughs> like like no no new interfaces or anything that we ever do should just assume a whole graph for a CID. And I think that we're all agreed on that. Like we've been working with it for a while, but it is the case that the pinning API very specifically states like we're talking about the whole graph. Like that's the whole point of giving it to me is so that I go get the whole graph, right? And one of the limitations is that it works with full graphs, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that was the original thought of the design of the pinning API, but I don't agree with that. I think the pinning API to me and to most people that I've talked to means mm -hmm. like, hey, I want this data to persist. It doesn't matter what mm -hmm. it is. So, right. Well, so, like, you can look through the you can look through the issues, and and I guess I'll give you the mm -hmm. the history. Although Lytle, Lytle could do a better justice here, but basically it was like, hey, does anyone know how we want to describe subgraphs? And this is before selectors were even like selectors are still early days, but this is even earlier, like before that was very usable. And it was like, does anyone know how we want to describe these graphs? Do we want to use this overlay business? And everyone's like, I don't know. Let's just ship a thing. Let's do what GoIPFS uses, which is CID equals graph, right? Um, that's like the, with like a big question mark of like, everyone agrees this is the wrong thing. Does anyone have a better idea? No, I guess let's, let's ship it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but now, you know, we're reaching that point where like, cool, we, we have an API, we have multiple services, they're using the API and needs to now maybe be, be better evolved to include, you know, include these pieces that we were left out previously, but now we need an answer for. Um, but, but at the same time, like, and, and Mob was pointing to this, and I don't know how far they've, they've gotten in actually, like, like implementing and inspecing it out, but we can, we're also close enough now that we can kind of see this future point where once the ADLs are in WebAssembly or in something that can be content addressed, like the whole space of what you can do here really opens up. Um, and so like you, you can imagine like, um, it, they mentioned the, the, the IPLD pathing namespace. You could imagine like those paths just being interpreted by whatever the data structure implementation of Wasm is. So when you, so rather than saying I have like a path to a Wikipedia page, you give it the, the Wikipedia topic or the Wikipedia like thing in the URL and then that gets passed into a WebAssembly function and that WebAssembly function traverses the graph and says, here's all the blocks you need, right? Um, and that really opens up like kind of the entire programmability space for what selections can be and what the criteria is and, and all of that. Um, and so it's kind of a matter of like, how much do we, how far do we go down the rabbit hole of like describing all of these selection mechanisms and criteria when there definitely is a future coming up where we can just let the programmer put these in the logs and, and put them into the network. And so I think, this, so that that topic, which I will, <laughs> I will, I will, I guess, try and summarize is like, what, what is the right layering in the, in the IPLD space for like, mm -hmm. is there a reason why codecs and ADLs and schemas, is there a reason why all of these things are different things? Is there, what are the benefits to them? How do we use them, right? Um, and, and what are the requirements, right? Whether, and I think like at the IPFS thing, whether it's in like the WebAssembly track or the data agony track or somewhere else discussing this, I think, makes sense because because you ask you end up with questions like if i'm running a pinning service do i want to do i need to have a wasm interpreter to run a run a pinning service does that make sense to me right uh and and understanding like some of those questions that you where there are where there are trade-offs and like seeing how how what seems like a reasonable way to evolve this you know I'll also chime in here. I mean, to your point, Dean, um, we want to support the pinning services spec, but if it becomes prohibitive to us scaling, like we'll probably be forced to drop it. Um, that's not what we want to happen, but you know, at the end of the day, right? Yeah, it's going to work for people. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I, we, we, we may not even support the pinning service API, to be fair. <laughs> like, like we already um, don't allow access. Like, you have to request access to it. Um, and we push people away from it because um, it's just way easier if you can just hand us car files. And for most users, that's, that's what they would prefer. Um, yeah. I can yeah. vouch on that. 
point as well. There's already a lot mm-hmm. of things that we're recognizing on our end from the pinning services spec that it's like, it's going to be difficult to continue to support it if we need to scale in some very key areas, just because of some of the requirements that it has. Um, so those yeah, are decision yeah. I mean, points that are but, coming up in our path as well, just to be very clear there. Yeah, what the are yellows, like, right? So like, what, the, the, I feel like one of the things that was difficult and we'll call it V1 of the spec, right? Was like the the driving, like the driving of all the relevant parties to build the spec that makes that makes sense for them, right? If there are multiple pinning services that are like, the spec doesn't work for me this way, but like, I would prefer it to work this way, then like, I think I know what V2 of the spec should look like, right? <laughs> um, yep. Right? And so like, and again, this is part of uh, the ver- some of the, the more antiquated pieces around like, go IPFS drives X and then tries to like work with people. To imp- and it's like, we now have like a bunch of services that are doing this, right? Um, at, at large scale. And so we should just engage in the repo and figure out like, how do we do the next thing? Is the next thing just yeah. shift car files this way? And like, what are the trade-offs? And like, I don't know, right? You, you guys run the services at yeah. scale. You have, good, you have good insight into what this means. So uh, uh, like most, so all, all of our rights, not all, the vast majority of our rights uh, and where we see all the growth is coming in from clients that can just encode into car files in the client. From user requests for like people that can't get their data in that way, we see far more people asking us for an API where they can just dump us regular files and have us do the encoding. Um, and very few people ask for, for pinning stuff. It's really like other large providers that already run some IPFS infrastructure might have that, but for the most part, we, we don't get a ton of requests on it. The only major use case we've seen for the pinning services stack has been IPFS desktop. That seems to be where 99% of our, our users there are coming from. And I don't necessarily know if those users care what the IPFS pinning services spec looks like or how it behaves. They just want, I do file, it goes pinata. Like that's, <laughs> that's all they care about or whatever service they plug in. Although it, so, so one of the things that's, I guess, been, been my like historical, be like, go for it, but, but warning signs around this is that in the areas where people have done, uh, I I give I give file I get out CID. Uh, they then they read some docs and they're like, oh well, the cool thing about IPFS is I can host the data in multiple places and like I'll download it from any of them and it either gets speed ups or if one of them has a bad day or an infrastructure outage or the one guy relies on Cloudflare and the other one relies on Amazon and one of them has a bad day and the other one doesn't today, right? Uh, it'll work oh, but wait, I uploaded the file and they both had different encoding parameters because like IPFS is, because Unix mm-hmm. FS is not BitTorrent and there is more than one way to encode the file. So I, I think that mm-hmm. having more than one way to encode the file is actually like pretty reasonable. People may disagree. I think this is fine. We can mm-hmm. push away. We can make more strict versions that are like, here is the best way to encode a file and, and, work, and talk about that. But like... Mm-hmm. Um, Users needs to be need to be able to like make sure that they can put the data on multiple services, and that their mm-hmm. links won't break. And if mm-hmm. Estuary and NFT Storage, I think already use different encoding parameters, which I think may also be different from the Pinata encoding parameters. So like this already doesn't work. Um, and that's that's like the thing I would I want to try and like protect our users from because we know more about how the IPFS things, like we, the people on this call, know more about things than mm-hmm. most of our first time users. And they're gonna get way more confused by this than we'll get confused by this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, that, that's just, I guess, the thing that I, I always, I, I try and be like, I wanna make things very easy for them, but I also don't want them to like walk straight into this wall. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and one of the problems here is that like, we, the guy PFS default parameters are Bad. the default parameters that have been there for a long time because we don't want to break things, but like they are not the parameters that anyone would prefer. And so that's why we've gone and used different parameters and different services, right? Like, I think that the parameters that we're using are better. Like, like we, we all think that they're better. <laughs> like they result in less blocks, uh, but um, definitely not compatible with like default IPFS. So go IPFS. 
But Estuary thinks Sorry, theirs is Kubo. better too. But Estuary thinks theirs is better than the one that the NFT dot storage. What are, what are the parameters that, that Estuary is using that are different I th than? I think they is use it... I think they use bigger blocks. We're not like they went to two megs or what? I like... don't remember. I I think at one point there were some people who were using two fifty six k and some were using one and maybe some are using two. I think we use a meg. I think we use a megabyte. Yeah, yeah. Like we're yeah. yeah. Like that. That's I thought that that was the preferred that we all like. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And then there are some people who have interesting mm -hmm. things where they, you know, I've seen some cool projects where someone's like, oh, I'm going to chunk up an ISO based on the internal file boundaries mm -hmm. inside of the ISO, right? Like, yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that's, that's correct, though. Like, <laughs> like, like, that is actually the right way to do that. Uh, I feel like we, we could have a project that was just doing media encodings for different media formats in like the way that respects the media format. It's really obvious for all like multimedia, like video and audio, like it's it's literally like the header and then the keyframes, like that's it. Um, we should just like have that out there so that people can use it and know like what the correct way to do that is. Uh, Mauve. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um... I think that pinning services spec is super useful and it's super important that there are multiple implementations that support it. So just yesterday I was talking to Ilya from Web Recorder and we were talking about what our future plans are for publishing and pinning archives. And so we were talking about um, using web3.storage to store stuff, but also to see how we can let users kind of like pin their own data or work with institutions where say you have an institution and they want to use their own IPFS cluster that they have self-hosted. It's really nice to be able to just configure it at the application level rather than having like special APIs for every single use case, which seems to be where a lot of cloud things are right now, where it's like everyone has their own API and you need different API tokens and different pieces of code to talk to it. Whereas right now in the IPFS space, like data storage does seem to be like a lot more commodified where I can just be like, hey, I want to store some data. And then a users can bring their own storage backend if they want. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to maybe address some of this. I think, I think where at least I want to push us and maybe to create a team I'm with uh, to make it, like I totally agree we need an API that works. I would go even a step further and say like, we should get to the point where you talk to any gateway and you can ask it to pin it and to route it for you to the, whoever you have a pinning service with. We've been doing a lot of work with UCANs, which is like self-signed certificates that gives you capabilities. So you can imagine where say Pinata gives you a token and then I send the request to web storage with that token and web storage will actually route it to Pinata to pin it there. Uh, and stuff like that, or go to IPFS.io and it will route it to wherever it's needed. It's actually nice because in UCANs, uh, everything is issuer and, and audience are addressed by public keys. So technically we can even look them up in lib P2P world, find out what the peer ID is and kind of connect to them. So I think we can get to much better states than what pinning service offers today. It just matter of kind of I think figuring out what the API really looks like and then trying to yeah but there. but there, there's like some some like at scale things that we've also changed that make it a little bit so so for instance like um, listing your pins and doing deletes like that's really difficult for us because in the new system we literally take a pin request and then get a whole car file for it and then we we reference everything by the car CID. Like we tend to think in those terms. And if you were to update the data structure and then do another one, you'd get a, another full graph that you would also then be paying for, like the full graph again. Um, Cause that, that's like how all of that is engineered. And so we, like you can open up so much cool stuff. Like you literally would be able to swap out any backend for our backend with you can't because they, they create a decentralized way for you to do all the RPC encoding. Um, but there's still this fundamental problem of like, we think about the unit of storage as being a car file and and within that car file we actually have queries that tell you about the other amounts of data in it and things like that um and, and unless that gets kind of reconciled or pushed up into the the pinning api or at least into some kind of you can variant of the pinning api like i don't see how we would make it work within the infrastructure 
Yeah, I mean, we already spec'd out something that I think we might work, which we, which I call these days replication protocol, uh, which essentially is kind of very similar to pinning, but it's car based and it's mutable. So you can like incrementally amend to the graph or a DAG you're building up. Uh, mm -hmm. and oh, I and the really cool, the really cool, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step on a rock way to promote his work a little bit. But the really cool thing about this is that you can actually take the UCAN for updating the IPNS record for the write that you're doing and encode them into the car file such that you can give the car file to the pinning provider. And then once the car file is available, they can update the IPNS record. Um, very cool. So we have some time left. I wanna make sure uh, if there were any questions around like IPFS saying things that haven't been addressed that wanted to get addressed, mm -hmm. that we have time to go through those to the best of uh, those of us here's ability to address them. Um, what track should I put IPLD stuff under? Just throw it under the data agony one. Uh, I, 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 that name I stole from Dietrich, um, but the idea is like all of the things that people, you know, want, want to quetch about in, in relation to, or, or problem solve in relation to like how it is that we store and work with and move around data seems like a reasonable place to do it. Um, because we don't have guys, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bounce here. Sorry. Yeah. Cool, cool. Does anyone else feel like the, the, these tracks all cover the entire audience? <laughs> so we have like oh, so, this track conflict like embedded into the system a little so, bit. Correct. And 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 uh, from some like of the I folks want to be in been, everything. This is a real correct. Problem. So from some of the folks who have worked on this, uh, this is uh, quote unquote intentional behavior, uh, which is that. I've, I've, I've mentioned that I, when I first saw this, I said the same thing. When I talked to some other folks, they've said the same thing. You're saying the same thing, which is, wow, I care about like all of these things, maybe some more than others, but like, I care about all of these things. I want to go to all of them, but that realistically at the end of the day, I only have so many hours in the day, which means I probably am only going to be able to work on a few of them realistically in the next six months, year or whatever. So if I can try and guess a few of them that like I'm going to end up wanting to prioritize personally more than others, I guess that's where I can like try and allocate my time. Um, I think that's the idea behind this. You know, it's got ups and downs, uh, but we'll say it is expressing an ecosystem stress, which is that a lot of us want to solve a lot of problems, uh, and there's a lot to and there's a lot to solve and talk about. Yeah, I mean, I guess have, I have like a lot. I have a lot of people that work on this stuff, so we, we actually can go after. A so bunch you of can, things, right? So yeah. you can divide but, and conquer, but, but yeah. right? So yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah. But the individual people can go to the individual ones. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I think that's kind of. I think that's kind of the idea. Um, yeah, I, I recognize maybe, maybe I biased it with some of my thoughts, but yeah, if, if people want to talk about the 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 data things and and what we do with them, uh, I would, I I would be I would be happy to. Uh, I set some space aside for that. Um, I'm, if anyone wants to talk about data at the storage conference, uh, well, no, <laughs> not distract. not well, not as opposed to finding the data or downloading the data or updating the data. If you just want to talk about how do I deal with the data, all right? Uh, Got it. There's Got some it. there's some blank space for you. Um, but yeah, I think there's I mean there's a lot of cool stuff to to talk about, uh, and I am looking forward to what. Uh, seeing folks there um get in your get in your prs updating your like here's a talk i want to talk about or even maybe just indicate like i would like to hear a thing about x uh so that um you know people can uh try and schedule around that or figure out oh oh crap do we have zero people that want to talk about this thing and like a hundred that want to talk about this thing maybe we need to break it up <coughs> Um, and with that, I tried to take some notes, but the otter will have all of the notes and we'll have to post it in here because uh, there's a lot of cool stuff talked about today. Uh, thank you all and see you uh, next time. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adine. Yeah.